So this is the Audioscape EQPA, which is a tube equalizer. And if you're looking at it and it looks a little familiar, you're thinking Poltec. Well, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna see what these things are capable of. We're gonna test them out on kicks, snares, vocals, even entire mix buses. And we're also gonna compare it to the plugin to see how it measures up. Let's have some fun. <sighs> okay, so this is how we'll do it. I'll play a specific sound source, bass, kick, snare, vocal, mix, bus, uh, overall mix. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first play the sound with it just engaged so you can just generally hear the rawness of what the EQP is actually doing straight up just running through the tubes and just hearing the sound of what it does to your sound immediately. After I engage it, I'm gonna then start to tweak some knobs to start letting you hear what it is actually doing and the effects and what it can bring out of your sound. So the first sound that we're gonna play with is going to be bass. Now I just wanna be very clear. You're gonna see some stereo tracks in my session on some things that should be a mono track. All my phase warriors, I know it's fine. It's in mono. I have a stereo pier of the EQPAs that Audioscape was so gracious to send me. And I must disclaim that in this video that they did send this to me. And um, I'm going to use both of these to uh, basically manipulate the signal. So you're gonna see me manipulating both of them in order to uh, make sure that the left and right are getting that sound. Let's give it a shot. And let's play with bass first. So this thing adds a lot of body and weight to those bass uh, sounds, which is pretty much what the EQPA is so known for. This Audioscape one is really good at doing that, adding that bottom and that roundness, and also being able to give me some of that top end that I desire too, which isn't talked about much when it comes to the EQPAs or pull techs and things of that nature. It has a really, really nice way of how it does the, the top end with those tubes and the harmonics. It's beautiful. Let's move on to the next thing which is going to be a guitar oh my gosh are you like watching my video did you know you can comment like and subscribe okay don't skip okay don't skip okay back to your video i'm sorry Okay, 
So even with just using the boost and the attenuation knob, we're basically getting rid of some of, of that stuff within that curve. It, it, it kind of allows you to shape the sound how you want. The guitar was a little muddy, so I decided I want some of that low end body, but at the same time, I wanna get rid of some of that mud. And thus it allows you to basically shape the curve how you want it. Really, really nice. Added some beautiful harmonics to that guitar. Okay, so now let's move on to one of the sound sources that this thing is made for. It's so famous for, and that is kicks. I'm going to basically show you what this thing can do to kicks, even kind of shaping the sound a bit, and I'm gonna exaggerate things, of course. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to make kicks explode in the EQPs and basically um, use that as a parallel kick copy in order to kind of give the other kick, the original kick, some more flavor and just some more bottom end. But let's see what it does on kicks. So as you can hear, I was able to shape that kick to pretty much whatever I want. If I wanted more thump, but less bottom, then I could use the attenuator to change the uh, the curve a bit when it comes to the frequency um, and stuff like that. And like I said, it just adds so much to it. I can make this thing explode uh, in that. I bumped the 60 deep, uh, the 60 hertz range up to five, and you see what it sounded like. And to know that I can double that, that's a lot of times what I like to use um, when it comes to my kick parallel change. When I'm trying to get a kick to sound disgusting and huge and, and explosive, I'll use the destroy it in those EQPs, let it get saturated through those tubes and basically bring that copy and parallel it and blend it in with the original. So that is it on kicks for the most part. I even took some stuff off the top to show you that it can do that as well. Let's continue. Okay, so let us try this on a vocal, which is what I am most impressed about with the EQPA. Now I've read about it, heard about it for years, never had the chance of actually using one until now as far as the EQP, EQP and, the, and the tubes and things of that nature that Audioscape has done such an amazing job replicating and creating. Um, I never understood when people said that this thing for vocals added this beautiful top end that um, was so, so amazing. And now I'm so married to it when it comes to adding air. Usually I always think about, you know, Poltec emulations or EQPAs and things of that nature from Audioscape as more of a low end thing, but I am so wrong. This thing is so much more versatile than I've realized. Listen to this thing on the almighty vocal. Let's check this out. It's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry. It's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry. It's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry. It's not the same no more. 
Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry, it's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry, it's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry, it's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won. If I lost, I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry, it's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry, it's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry, it's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry, it's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I So it adds this beautiful top end to the vocal that I love so much. And yes, I know I'm using it with a stereo sound, with a mono sound. I I know, I know. Just enjoy it. It, uh, it with phase, my phase warriors out there and stuff like that. It has such a nice top end sound that I just love so much. And it adds a ton of body. When I throw the 100 hertz on that particular vocal, or in vocals in general, all that body that I felt like I was missing, it just grabs it and brings it to the forefront. And I feel like I just get so much saturation from the tubes and things of that nature from what it just gives me harmonically. Um, really, really powerful when it comes to uh, vocals as well. Like I said, this thing is super versatile from crushing and smashing kicks to just adding body to vocals to giving me top end that is just not as harsh as I thought it would be. And also there was already, this vocal was already too bright, but when I added all that brightness, it was, I could tell that if the vocal wasn't so s -y as is, that it would be sheeny and shiny. And you could hear it, it just has a beautiful top end that I enjoy very much. So let's move on to the very last thing. Okay, so now for this next one, or this last one, example-wise, let us listen to it on an overall mix, something in stereo, something that is, uh, let's say, uh, it's you're finished with your mix for the most part, or you're just affecting your stereo mix bus. Let's listen to what that sounds like. I just wanna put a couple steps in your passport. I can get your angles and angular, lost in Ibiza. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? Could be us in these vibes, baby. Bring your camera, cause I'm trying to. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles and angle Lost in the visa. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? It could be us in these vibes, baby. Bring your camera, cause I'm trying to. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles and angle Lost in the visa. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? Could be us in these vibes, baby. Bring your camera, cause I'm trying to. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles and angle Lost in the visa. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? It could be us in these vibes, baby. Bring your camera, cause I'm trying to. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles and angle Lost in the visa. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? Could be us in these vibes, baby. Bring your camera, cause I'm trying to. I just wanna put a couple stamps in your passport. I can get your angles and angle Lost in the visa. Looking for this girl, have you seen her? Could be us in these vibes, baby. Bring your camera, cause I'm trying to. So I did some really, really cool things to the overall mix. I was able to engage 8K on the entire mix and it just opened the entire thing up. And I'll be honest with you, I've been doing that a lot lately with the EQPAs uh, on my mixes, just kind of letting it run through those tubes and this EQ in general and just getting those harmonics and making it feel a little bit more punchy and just smoothing out the entire uh, sound source for the most part. What you're realizing also when I hit in on the actual EQPAs is you notice that it feels like it gets a little tucked, like it kind of like rounds everything off for the most part. Parts that I felt were harsh, all of a sudden are not as harsh anymore. It feels like there's like this type of compression going on where it's just smoothing out certain things in my sound source that I really, really, really enjoy. 
Okay, so let's play a little game. Right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a Poltec emulation, plug-in version, of uh, the EQP versus uh, the Audioscape EQP. And we're gonna see which one you prefer and you like. I've level matched them both to be the ex same exact uh, volume as far as where they're peaking. I've also made sure I put the knobs exactly the same. The boost, the attenuate, the, the bandwidth, everything is exactly the same. And I made sure that I level matched them so you can truly hear which one even just has a better transient response and things of that nature. I'm putting them at the same exact peak uh, so you can get an idea of what it is. So I have to say that. So let's hear these things. The plug-in versus the EQPA from Audioscape. It's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry. It's not the same no more. Trying to figure out if I won, if I lost. I be feeling like I should run when they call. Ever since you ghosted, I've been with the motions. I'm sorry. Okay, drum roll, please. <laughs> Okay, so if you chose A, that was the emulation plug-in version of the Pultec from Waves. And if you chose B, that was the Audioscape EQPA. Now, what did I hear as far as the difference between those two? One, uh, the fullness and roundness and the way that it was able to add that air or that topping to the vocal, it was a lot smoother, it wasn't as harsh. I noticed that it, it just felt so much better and it felt so much more round. And also, here's the funny thing, it sounded louder, which I thought was very interesting and that is the beauty of saturation. Okay, so something that I really, really have to mention when I did this test and something that honestly blew my mind and I didn't even know was gonna happen myself was the fact that when I compared the plug-in version to the actual hardware piece, I made sure that I level matched them at the same peak volume. The reason why I wanted to do it at the same peak volume as opposed to, okay, they sound like they're at the same level is because think about it like this. If a plugin or if any piece of hardware or if something is saturating a sound source to the point where the perceived loudness is louder, it appears louder than what it's actually showing on my meters as far as how much voltage or headroom it's eating up, that needs to be noted in the test. So what I wanted to do was, and what I did was, I literally level match them at making sure that they're peaking at the same spots or the same point as far as negative 4.3. They both peaked at negative 4.3, but I wanted you to hear the difference in, hey, this is what negative 4.3 sounds like in the Audioscape EQP, and this is what negative 4.3 sounds like with the actual uh, emulation plug-in version. I think that's really important to know, and that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't do. So that, I had to give a little disclaimer about that. To prove it even further, if you look at these two meters right here, you can see basically what they did. On the left-hand side, this one right here, this is the Audioscape EQP as far as what it gave me, and this is the plug-in version as far as what it gave me um, regarding the luffs and everything else. As you can see, the true peak on the Audioscape was peaking at 4.4, and then on the uh, Poltec, it was, excuse me, as far as the plug-in is concerned, it was peaking at uh, 4.3. The luffs, the which is giving me that perception of volume, uh, it's right here at negative 16.3. So the luffs are higher on the Audioscape EQP in comparison to the um, uh, uh, plug-in version of it. I think that's really important to note uh, especially when it comes to these types of things because if this thing is giving me the perceived volume over the plug-in, then I prefer what this is doing over that. And I just had to get that disclaimer. You can draw your own conclusions from that and decide for yourself. To each his own, you know, whatever you prefer, but I'm going with the EQPA from Audioscape on that one. I wanna really thank Audioscape for sending me over these EQPAs. I really, really wanted them. I remember talking uh, to Trevor in the DM uh, about it once and, you know, surprise, surprise, they actually sent it to me. So I just really wanna say that I really, really appreciate um, uh, Audioscape for doing that. They are a really down to earth company. I really rock with them and I really mean that. The fact that, uh, you know, on the Audioscape account, me and, or, you know, Trevor and I just laughing with each other about just anything just audio related uh just really means a lot and really lets me know that the people over at audioscape are really down to earth and people that i really would just 
love for you guys to just invest in and check out. And this is just a breakdown. This isn't a review at all. This is me just sharing my piece, letting you hear some things, and that's it. I really don't want to label this as a review. Um, I just want you to hear, and you make your own judgments. I'm not here to review anything um, or anything of that nature. I, I just want you to hear it for what it is, and you make your own decisions from that. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I did. I know I'm going to be having a lot of fun with these two pieces, um, especially having a stereo pair now and being able to put it on my mix bus. Um, but um, yeah, to all my phase junkies out there, I know it's kind of like I used it in multi mono. So just, just, just take it easy, man. I didn't feel like rewiring my entire studio, okay? I uh, appreciate you guys, and um, let me know what else you would like uh, for me to review. If you want me to review anything else from Audioscape, let them know. Um, and once again, Audioscape, thank you so much for sending me the EQPAs and being such a down-to-earth company, one of the most down-to-earth companies that I've ever worked with and um, had the pleasure of using their stuff. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, and also make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram. Make sure you join our Discord community with a bunch of other inspiring engineers like yourself listen to that my audio nerds podcast every single wednesday uh and um until next time